So Peter Welsh in the chat says, looking forward to the May elections and to Green gains. Wonder if the local Labour defections, Greenwoods at a local level, are going to replicate at a national level and who? Great platform. Appreciated. Thank you so much for that question, Peter. It's a very, very interesting one. I'm assuming your question relates to, I guess, parliamentary defections, um, which we'll touch on in a little moment. But I guess the the other element of your question is, I guess, more broadly um, about defections from Labour to the Greens at a national level that isn't, I guess, MPs. And one thing we've seen really interestingly recently, I think, is we have seen some of those defections taking place um, of kind of core Labour activists, uh, campaigners, influencers and so on. Not MPs, but people who were very, very active in the Labour Party during the Jeremy Corbyn years, jumping ship to the Greens over the last 18 months or so, sometimes less than that. Um, so Al Folan, who I spoke to earlier today uh, from Stats for Lefties and a Navarra Media contributor, um, Al was a member of the Labour Party during the Jeremy Corbyn years. I remember very vividly uh Al joining the Labour Party because I was on a bus with them in Norwich when they told me they were going to do it um and they left the Green Party then and joined the Labour Party they've since rejoined the Greens um uh, very very recently and they wrote a brilliant article on Broke Green about why they did so we've also seen a number of kind of other left in, uh left left-wing figures um who have Similarly, uh, joined the Greens and defected from Labour. So one of the most um, striking ones was Matt Zarb Cousin. So Matt Zarb Cousin was a former uh, spokesperson for Jeremy Corbyn. He worked for Jeremy Corbyn in the early years of his premiership. Uh, he, about a year ago now, maybe not that long, uh, defected to the Green Party uh, with the Labour Party's move to the right, uh, made the decision to join the Greens as the the as a as a left wing party. Uh, we've also recently seen that George Aylett, who is a sort of big left influencer on Twitter, um, former parliamentary candidate for the Labour Party, he recently said that uh, people shouldn't vote for Labour and should instead vote Green. So we're seeing those types of people um, defect. Uh, switch their allegiance to the Greens either by joining or saying that people should vote for them. I think we're likely to see quite a bit more of that. I think we're likely to see it particularly um, in the coming weeks as the Labour Party appears to be doubling down and digging in on its sort of right wing reactionary positions on cultural and social issues. Um, so obviously we've seen recently, you know, the Labour Party triangulating at best and throwing trans people under the best under the bus at worst when it comes to uh, the kind of culture wars around trans rights at the moment. We've seen them, you know, going hard on law and order and antisocial behaviour. Um, we've seen them, you know, complaining about the Labour, the, the Tory government for its migration policies, not because they're disgraceful, inhumane, racist and repugnant, but because they're not deporting people quick enough. All of these kinds of issues, I think, is going to see increasing numbers of people defecting from Labour to the Greens, who could be quite prominent. Uh, so we're going to see it at the local level in terms of local activists and members. We'll definitely see it in terms of councillors. We'll see it in terms of sort of uh, national influence and figures, influences and figures as well. I think that's only going to accelerate. And like, I think if you're if you've got a Twitter account, you can't have missed over the last two weeks the number of uh, photographs you've seen of people's Labour Party membership cards uh, cut up in pieces um, on the uh, on 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 Twitter. I think that's going to inevitably lead to some movement towards the Greens. The interesting thing I think about that is that I think what you're probably going to see is it taking place immediately after the local elections, <clears throat> because. I think that at the moment you've seen a lot of people leaving the Labour Party, i.e. they've been pushed. So uh, they've been you know, pushed by whether it's you know, the Labour Party's position on migration or those disgraceful dog whistle adverts that the Labour Party put out about Rishi Sunak um, very recently. You've seen people being pushed out of the Labour Party because of that. I think it's going to be a while until you see them pulled into the Green Party. I think the moment that's going to happen is in the immediate aftermath of the local elections, because when that happens, uh, there's momentum generated. So if the Green Party wins, you know, somewhere in the region of 100 to 200 seats, people will see I've left the Labour Party. This is a viable electoral vehicle of the left that I can get on board with as well. So I think you're going to see that probably after local elections. I might be wrong, but I think that's when it's going to happen. I think you're probably going to eventually see a, a pretty substantial 
wave of uh, people of it happening, possibly on the uh, a similar scale to what happened in 2014 and 2015 under the Green Surge. Uh, because what happened in that period was, again, the Labour Party had moved significantly to the right, not just on economic issues, but crucially also on social issues as well. So 2014-15, you had the Labour Party uh, printing mugs with controls on immigration emblazoned on them. You had them like Ed Miliband stood literally in front of a giant stone where the words controls on immigration had been etched and carved into them. You had them, uh, you know, you know, Rachel Reeves at the time was, I think, the shadow DWP secretary talking about how the Labour Party would be even tougher on migrants, uh, not migrants, sorry, um, welfare claimants than the Tories had been. That was, you know, the Tories who'd introduced the bedroom tax, who'd introduced uh, universal credit, workplace assessments, all the awful things that have um, really decimated welfare and demonised welfare claimants. The Labour Party were claiming they'd go even further than that. So I think the conditions are very, very similar to that. The difference this time is that when the Green Surge happened, the Green Party had maybe 15,000 members and went to 50,000. Uh, so went to went, went up 35,000 in a matter of months. The difference now is we, the Greens currently have 50,000 members. And so if there is a massive swing influx of new members into the Greens, then you're looking at that going up to 60, 70,000, potentially even higher if there's a substantial move from the Labour Party over to the Greens in the coming months. I think the moment's going to be the local elections. I think you are going to see a, a substantial uh, movement towards the Greens then, probably on a similar scale, I think, initially to um, what happened after the 2019 local and European elections, when there was a mini version of the Green surge. I think there was one point where um, the Greens were gained a thousand um, members in a single day. Someone can fact check that. I wrote an article for Bright Green on it in 2019, so someone can Google that and find out if that was true. But I think you're probably going to get a similar scale to that of, you know, a few thousand new members joining in the immediate aftermath of the local elections. Lots of them will be refugees from the Labour Party. Um, that kind of answers your question, but I guess your initial question was actually about uh, MPs and the reality is I don't know. Like, I'm not, I don't have, I'm not, I don't have inside knowledge. I think it's a huge thing for an MP to defect. I think there are lots of left-wing Labour MPs that basically it appears that their strategy is at the moment sit down, stay quiet and hope that Labour wins a slim majority in the next election so that therefore the uh, left of the Labour parliamentary party has substantial influence and leverage over the, um, the Labour leadership. Because if the Labour Party wins a majority of, say, 20 at the next election, well, there's over 30 members of the Socialist Campaign Group, which is the main left group within the Parliamentary Labour Party. If the Labour Party has only a majority of 20 and there are 30 Socialist Campaign Group members, that means that, that group of MPs can be really influential over the government because they have the votes. I suspect what you've got at the moment is the strategy amongst the Labour left is essentially sit on your hands, don't get expelled, don't get kicked out, don't get don't have what happened to Corbyn happen to you. Stay quiet, be on your best behaviour and then exercise your leverage for the next election if the majority is small. That's, I suspect, what's happening. So I think I think it's very unlikely you're going to get anyone jumping ship uh, anytime soon. It's possible if the a scenario happens after that, maybe it'll happen. I don't know. It's worth always bearing in mind that a lot of the people who are on the left of the Parliamentary Labour Party now, of course, have been Labour members for a very, very long time. They stayed Labour members during New Labour. They outlasted the, the Iraq war, privatisation, PFI, uh, you know, the all the repugnant tuition fees, all the awful things that the uh, the Labour government did in, in office um, from 97 to 2010. They stayed during that. The reality is that, like, it, it, these people are wedded to the Labour Party and it's going to be very, very hard. So I'd be surprised if you see that 